Welcome back to another episode of our Mech Warrior 1 playthrough. I'm your host, Gaming J, and if you're just joining us in the last two episodes, we have tried our hand at being a mercenary, being a merchant, and tracking down the conspiracy behind our disgraced family. And we are nearing the end game. Today, we have successfully, in our last video actually, we successfully built up a mercenary company that is comprised of four Mech Warriors, and actually... When we hired Sajak, she was poor and poor. She's now average and average, so she's just barely normal. And that's actually some improvement. I thought we were going to have to clear house with our crew and hire completely new crew once we gained enough experience. I haven't I haven't ruled that out yet. We might just clear house and hire some better people. Um, in fact, actually, let's go see what caliber of folks we can actually recruit. Um, oh my god, good and excellent. I am interested, but we can't hire her. Okay. The fact that we are seeing some good and excellent pilots come up, I think means that the very first order of business is going to be to fire everyone. So I don't know how we even fire people, but we're going to have to figure something out here. Ah, uh, here we go. Dismiss. You're dismissed. Bob True, you're dismissed. And I have a soft spot for Sajak. Maybe we won't completely clear house, but I am kind of feeling like we're clearing house. Sajak was with me since the beginning. She was my merchant companion. She kept me uh, sane in those long treks between planets as we were just selling mechs. We gave up being a mercenary. This guy is good and good. I'm holding out for an excellent. Oh, right away. Pilot, excellent. All right. I work alone or maybe with Team Banzai. Maybe with you. Sir, you do work with me. Boom, and now we got another one. The Great Death Legion is where I learned to fight. You know what, Kevin Cole? I'm actually not gonna hire you because I want somebody more interesting looking, to be honest. Like Torsak. Drove a Marauder for the 21st Century Lancers. That's pretty good. Is there anyone else more interesting? Oh, Average. No, forget about that. Last tour, I worked at Griffin for the, the Iridani Light Horse. Fun fact, the Griffin actually isn't in this game, although it is mentioned, obviously. Anyone else? Good and average. I am not interested. Anyone else? Average and average. Nope. Okay, so we only have three people in our crew right now. That's actually okay. Let's go ahead and check out what mechs are available today. Today we're going to be wrapping up the story. Um, ooh, there is a Warhammer for sale for 5.9 mil. Um, yes, we will take that. Um, today we're going to be wrapping up the story, and in doing so, um, we just have a few other planets to visit, and then we have to build out a big mech crew for one big final battle. And that's basically the end of Mech Warrior. It's actually a relatively short game. Um, I'm going to buy another mech here. I'm going to do one last run as a merchant. So we have a few extra mechs here. Um, we're actually going to travel to another planet and sell a few mechs, and then try and actually hire a crew. But before we do that, let's go ahead and... So we have two uh, Warhammers, which are pretty solid mechs. They're no Marauders, but they're, they're pretty solid. Reload. All right, so two functioning Warhammers. I would like a Battlemaster, to be totally honest. We're going to sell the Jenner and the Phoenix Hawks, probably, before we go back into uh, combat. So without delay, let's go check out our options here. Miserable place with two seasons. Oh yeah, we sold here before. Notice that now it costs us a quarter of a million dollars to travel between planets. I think it said 270,000. Um, oh wait, we don't want to buy Max, we want to sell. Uh, so first of all, I guess let's start with the Phoenix Hawks because they're going to be worth the most. It's Five million. So the same amount that we paid for a Warhammer. We just sold a busted up Phoenix Hawks Hawk for. They don't need any more mechs. All right, we're going to have to find a new planet. That's okay. Uh, let's see if they have anyone good in the bar. We can fill out our mercenary crew here. Killer, no thanks. No one else is around. All right, I guess good and excellent are as good as we're going to get. So the next time we see a good and an excellent, we will uh, basically just pounce on it. Uh, now, let's head out somewhere over here. Producer of the best teas in the Commonwealth. They may not be the wealthiest place. Jumping off point for regiments attacking Merrick. I kind of want to go to a poor planet here. Petroleum. Like, notice, too, it's actually getting 
expensive. 600000 just to travel there. And we're going to do it because we got to sell mechs. We got some mechs we got to get rid of here. Uh, maybe if I saw a Battlemaster for sale out here, I would actually buy it. But uh, not no such luck today. Let's sell this. 5.4 million. That offset our costs coming here. We're going to sell this. 4.4 million. Done. All right. So we've whittled our way down to a nice lean crew. Uh, but I still... Like, we could go in here and we can assign uh, these guys to our Warhammers. I really still want to get a Battlemaster and a better crewman. So, who we got here? Average good. Not interested. No one's around. All right. We're going to travel to Tharkad, which is the capital of the Lyran Commonwealth, because they... Chances are going to have some mechs for sale. Although, is there anything valuable over here? Second largest battle, largest Commonwealth battle mech company. Let's travel here first on our way. Coventry, it is a major world in the Ly Lyran Commonwealth. Uh, and it's, look, look at this luscious green landscape. All right, do they have anything good for sale? They do not. What a disappointment. All right, let's see if we can hire a good crew member. John Zoe, average and average. That is not that is not good, my friend. Hey, look, uh, this this is totally true, Bob, in different colors. Ted Heigl, yeah, yeah, right. That's true. That's uh, the guy, the guy we fired shortly a little while ago. He's coming back. He wants back into the mercenary company, but it ain't gonna happen, buddy. We fired you for a reason. Uh, who else we got here? Good and average. We might just have to settle, maybe. I feel like we had like a bunch of really good... Oh, here we go, Aaron Falls. There isn't a mech I can't master. All right, Aaron, you're in. Uh, I, was, I was getting, you know, disheartened that we weren't seeing any like highly skilled people, but then all of a sudden, you know, comes out of nowhere, this excellent mech pilot. We still don't can't find a battle master, though. Uh, where should we go? Maybe we'll just bounce back and forth between here supports a large battle my factory let's bounce back and forth between hespers 2 and tharkad for a little bit until we can find uh the mech that we want do we want another warhammer you know what i guess it's a fine stop gap uh we will take it i was really hoping for a battle master or even a second marauder um what's interesting is in the last video i talked about how it'd be interesting if this game had a lot more mechs and if certain mechs were rarer and actually, I'm beginning to think, oh, they uh, actually don't have a part for this. Have to wait for parts. Wow, that's a first for us. So yeah, sometimes you go to repair something and literally the planet doesn't have the parts, which is kind of a cool mechanic. We uh, don't see it very often. Um, but I, f I have a feeling like the Marauder and Battlemaster are actually quite rare. We bought two Battlemasters back in our merchant days and just straight up sold them because we felt like we didn't need them. Uh, anyway, we, we have a full lance of heavy mechs. I feel like that's good enough to go into combat. Why not? And we really got to get Sajak up to speed. I like how my guy, I like how your guy also has, uh, like gunnery skills and stuff. But to be honest, like you're piloting him. So it's like, isn't he just good? <laughs> like if you're a good player, he should be just excellent, you know? Uh, anyway, defense of a field comm unit. That might be a good mission for us. Defense of a landing facility. Destroying stolen prototypes. There's only two mechs there. That could be fun. Defense of a fuel dump. Um, okay, let's go with the four on two, because I feel like that would just be hilarious, and who cares about uh, money at this point? I want two million. I want a whole bunch of that, and I don't care about being paid up front. Only 800,000, eh? I think we can get them up to one and a half million. Let's see. 1.2... One more shot. Let's see what they will give us. Okay, one. I said one and a half, and that's pretty much spot on. We will take that contract, and off to combat we go. Now, I think sometimes, if I'm not mistaken, occasionally the missions will say you're expecting two enemy mechs, but you could encounter more. And, like, actually, look. Look at this. It looks like there's three enemies there, but I'm pretty sure it said there were only going to be two, unless I misread the contract, which could have also could also be true. Uh, that's fine. Uh, oh, these guys are piloting uh, battle masters. I am jealous. Uh, let's see. So you attack the battle master. 
you attack Battlemaster, and you attack Battlemaster. We could get far more strategic, but I like just teaming up all on one enemy. Uh, taking him down, then moving on to the next one. Now the game is lagging because there's too much on the screen, but if we go to this command view, then things will go a little faster. So another trick for uh, when you're later in the game and the game gets slower is to spend a lot of the closing distance time between your opponents in this command view and cut out to the first person view only when you need to. You notice that things are chugging along a little slowly. Now that enemy battle master is just totally standing there. You can also zoom in. Anything to take, anything to cause the game to render less on the screen will generally be good for um, for the processor. Now let's see if that actually hits. We have a problem because my guy is in the way. Uh, I'm gonna try and go over to the left over here. Clear some distance. I'm also going to take off my medium lasers as per usual because I'm a sniper. Zoom back out. All right. So three on one, even though it's a battle master, I feel like this guy's going to go down very quickly. So I think we'll do like a mission or two uh, just sort of see how our company fares in the battle, uh, like in the uh, in the wild. And after we have sort of earned our stripes, after maybe our guys have gotten a little more experience, then we will basically just hop right into uh, the final leg of the story. Because I think there's really only like one or two more planets to uh, investigate. Um, <clears throat> we've been tracking down this conspiracy of people who want to somehow discredit um, our home planets. I don't think we ever figured out a full reason why. We've been duped by various secret agents on both sides uh, to do doing their dirty work. And we've never really figured out why uh, our home planet was sort of taken away from us. So hopefully we figure that out. Anyway, we just totally crushed uh, that Battlemaster. That was actually shockingly easy. Um, and <clears throat> I'm just going to let these guys act on their own. You know what? Rather than giving them specific orders, I'm just going to see if they know what's up. Because I guess we just have to dis destroy this uh, fuel depot. We don't really even have to destroy the other mechs. I mean, I guess we get more salvage if we do, but uh, honestly, we're not hurting for cash. So in this game, definitely, um, it's not too bad to... Uh, or, or look how fast my guy's walking now. See, like, once you don't have to render anything on the screen, the game engine really picks up. Um, it's not too hard to get cash in this game. As I showed you guys in the last video, you know, with, like, the... Being a merchant, buying low, selling high is one way to get a lot of cash. Um, you can also just do missions. I mean, I feel like we've only done a, f a couple of missions, but we keep making, like, two or three million dollars every single time we do a mission. Um, and mechs only cost, like, you know, five to eight. Um, oh, I just totally... This guy just totally walked into me. Dude. Uh, I'm your commanding officer. How about you don't just walk right in front of me? Um, Alright, let's just see if we can destroy this thing. From a distance. <clears throat> I don't know if that did any damage. The other enemies are another battle master. That's about it. That's all we can see right now. Probably irrelevant. We'll just go ahead with destroying this building. That will be our plan. And... Are we overheating? No, there we go. Boom! How do you like that? And then the, the defending forces are like, well, we failed, see ya. Boom! 2.5 million. The success in this assignment will not go unnoticed. Gideon Braver. The missions are obviously very simple in this game. Very simple missions. Once you get the hang of it, it's really not, not that hard to uh, to be successful. Uh, let's repair all these. Reload. Repair. I wish there was like a repair all that you could do for your entire lance. But you do have to go through these individually. I don't know how these guys got damaged. How did you guys all get damaged? There was only one Battlemaster that we took down, guys. Come on. 
Uh, Rifleman, nope. I think another reason I like the Marauder is it's actually proportionally quite heavily armored for its weight class. And I like being in like a fairly armored beast. An armored long range mech is a good kind of mech in this game. The Rifleman is also a pretty good long range mech because it has a dual autocannon fives, but its armor is actually quite weak. In fact, I think it's paper thin. All right, let's take one more mission here. No contracts are available this time. Never mind. Never mind. I thought we were going to take a mission. Check on our crew. We are still average. Don't worry, Sajak. We're going to get good. You're going to stick with me. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting in the news net. We've seen all these messages before, basically. Oh, here we go. Borrowed some computer files from our mutual friend. Included were some I thought you might find interesting. Duke Ishii Tahiro, CEO, Board Chairman Ma uh, Matabushi Inc. Uh, let's see what else he says. Greetings, Your Grace. We have located an excellent target to accomplish your objectives. A small outpost named Anders Moon. Oh, Sounds like this is the guy who conspired against my family. Too small to ever be of strategic interest to the Draconis Combine. Has a little trade traffic. Local government is small and controllable. Estimated flow capability. 50 million sea bills a month. If it pleases your grace, I will present a detailed proposal in person. So it looks like they, this company, this Matabushi Incorporated, basically, th this would be like Sony coming and screwing you over to get control of your family's ranch, you know? <laughs> For request permission to exercise Darkwing operation. Interesting. Um, greetings, Your Grace. Your pressure on the ISF has produced fruitful results. I'm most grateful. All preparations are complete. Young McBrin suitably duped into playing his part. Both factions bribed and agreeable. Wow. Um, so this, th those were the emails proving that uh, Sony basically conspired against my family. Brief headlines. New Avalon, Crucis Mars, Federated Sons, Justin Allard, son of MIIO director, Quintus Allard, and decorated officer goes on trial for treason. Wow. Justin Allard, he's a character in the Michael Stackpole Battletech books, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I read a lot of Battletech books uh, back in the day. Uh, here's a lot of brief headlines. I mean, it is 3028. The success, the fourth succession war, I think, is raging at the moment. Um, so blah, blah, blah. If you're interested in what was going on in the world of Battletech, that was some news. Anyway, this planet's basically dead. They don't have any Battlemasters, and they don't have any um, contracts for us. So let's head to Tharkad, see what we can see. Come on, Battlemaster. Oh, there's one. All right, what do you guys want for it? 8.2 million sold. I will go ahead and take this, and I will review the Battlemaster. Uh, it's non-functioning. What is damaged? Oh, life support. Oh, somebody blew the head off. Oh, the previous pilot totally died in this thing. <laughs> Everything is functional except the life support. Yeah, he suffocated. He suffocated to death. All right. Uh, this thing is repaired and reloaded. And we're going to go ahead and we will assign that Battlemaster to somebody. Uh, crew. Uh, we will give the Battlemaster to Aaron Falls because she looks like she means business. Oh, the Bee Master. It's such a beast they can't even write its whole name. The Bee Master. Also, the icons, or sorry, the color behind the, the mech icons does change. I think red is the heaviest. Black is heavy. Red is assault. Um, I think dark blue is medium and blue is light. I don't know why they didn't choose something between dark blue and blue, but that's what they went with for this game. Um, I'll keep an eye out for another battle master. In the meantime, we can definitely totally sell our uh, the battle master, the extra battle master that we've got. But let's take one mission here. Nine heavy mechs, an extended defensive campaign. Oh my god! I think for this campaign. Um, actually this, that would be a good mission. Okay, hold on. I'm going to save the game and we'll see how this goes. Game seven. All right. So for once you get, uh, a heavy enough lance, you can do these extended campaigns where you basically have like three missions, I think back to back Yeah, extended siege campaign, temporary relief. We don't want that defense of a supply depot. That's boring. Defense of a fuel camp. That's boring. Okay. Let's do the extended defensive campaign. And let's just go all out. Let's see how high they will go in terms of payment here. 
Um, and this will also be our training for the final battle. So this is going to be like three battles back to back. And I think that's going to set us up good. Um, <laughs> we're just maxing out the C bills, maxing that out. Submit. Oh my God. They, they're willing to pay that 10 million bucks basically. And how high can we get this? 18%. I want a lot of scrap on this one. 20%. 22%. They keep going higher. How high will this go? 23%. I think it's asymptoting. 23%. All right. This is actually pretty sweet. 10 million bucks and 20, almost 25% of the salvage. Uh, let's do this. Your contract is accepted. I actually don't even remember how these extended siege campaigns work. So this is actually going to be good practice for, um, you know, for that final battle that we're going to have to engage in. And we're going to have to be careful with our ammo. We can't just blaze through our ammo here. Okay, so defend the port facilities. Gotcha. So there's three mechs incoming on this one. So let's go ahead and go into our command view. And let's see who we got. We have a Battlemaster, a Warhammer, a Marauder, and a Shadowhawk. Okay, so you are going to attack the Battlemaster. This is the first time where we are going to have to split our guys up. You are going to go for the Shadow Hawk, and you are also going to go for the uh, Shadow Hawk. There we go. And I think I can take out those other two mechs, and then we'll have everyone converge on the remaining Warhammer. So that will be our strategy. And we're going to go down here, and kaboom. Okay, so we're starting off with a barrage of autocannon 5 fire. And I can't tell if we're hitting him or not. I think we are hitting him. Yep, those shots hit. They land. Boom. Boom. Hey, his leg is almost gone. There's no need to rush it. Boom. And boom. Come on, man. Okay, he's starting to damage us. There we go. All right, there goes his, his uh, leg. I don't know how much damage we took on that. All right, next is the other Battlemaster here. There we go. Uh, I'm actually going to put my medium lasers back on. And I'm going to take my autocannon 5 offline. And let's... Uh, I'm just going to let him pass us, and then we'll kind of shoot him from behind. There we go. And... Boom! He's down! Alright, that was super easy. Alright, who we got left? Ooh, there's a Marauder. We have not faced a Marauder in combat, so I am piloting a Marauder. This is my baby. I love the Marauder. Um, I feel like this game... I feel like the, the DOS Battletech games influenced me so much. Like the, uh, you know, the Crescent Hawks games definitely did. Um, but definitely I feel like, you know, the mechs that I fell in love with in these early DOS Battletech games are the mechs that I, like, came to love, you know, almost, like, forever. There we go. Boom, he's down. We didn't even get the chance to see him. And that's it. We successfully uh, fought off the first wave. All right, that's pretty good. All right, now we have another, another wave. Probably more or less the same thing. Let's uh, check our damage, by the way. Oh, we're, we're just fine. Look at that. We're, like, unscathed. Okay, attack enemy, battlemaster, rifleman. Two battlemasters. I got those guys. You guys take the Phoenix Hawk. I definitely don't want the Phoenix Hawk getting by us. And attack enemy. Whoops. Uh, attack enemy, the Phoenix Hawk. All right, you guys do that. <laughs> and I'll cover two of the other three, and then we'll all converge on the last one. Um, Yeah, I like how the AI in these early games is, like, just so predictable. You know, like, it's, it's going to beeline towards the facility, mostly ignoring you, not really going to cause a fuss. And as long as you don't get directly in its way, 
Like this battle master to my right, not the one that I've targeted, but the one to my right. Pretty much I can just ignore him and he's just going to walk right on by me. Um, and that gives me a chance to focus on his buddy here. And his buddy isn't even really going to target me, probably. Oops, five. Uh, I kind of want to do this. Okay, and see if we can get him. Damn it. <laughs> okay, he's kind of targeting me. Gonna boom, boom, boom. Oh, his legs are like so weak. Okay, come on, PPCs. Uh, I think I keep hitting his arm by mistake. Can I just fire an auto cannon five at his legs? Come on! So close. The game is actually also like very laggy. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Oh, there he goes. All right. One dude down. Uh, another dude on the horizon. And then that rifleman. Uh, here we go. All right. Oh, fuck. Which the auto cannon five? There we go. I'm trying to like just maintain the uh, distance weapons. I have my weapons kind of set up weird because the PPC and medium lasers are in the rotation. But the auto cannon five is out of it. I think I did that to try to maintain uh, ammo. But boom, boom. Auto cannon five, kaboom. Accidentally fired a medium laser. Just a bit of excess heat for no reason. Boom. Boom. Oh, my reactor actually shut down briefly. The Marauder actually also has like a good amount of heat sinks. Which is pretty, pretty handy. Good for cooling off when the action picks up. All right. Who's left? Oh my god, they did de they demolished that Phoenix Hawk. Look at it. They shot every little piece of it to shreds. Is it still functioning or did they wipe it out? Okay, that rifleman is still up and about. Can I hit him from here? Can't tell if that hits. Might have. Oh my god, they're de they're demolishing him too. Oh, his arm blew off. Oh, I think we just passed the mission. Or the game stalled. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> all right, it's a nighttime mission. I, I thought the game stalled there briefly. Okay, one last engagement. There's a Battlemaster, a Marauder, a Shadowhawk, another Battlemaster. All right, it's it's basically like cut and paste. These each, each one of these battles is basically like the exact same as the one that's come before. So as long as three of my guys can take out this one Shadowhawk, I got the two Battlemasters, and together we've got the Marauder. Easy. Easy. We just took out 12 mechs if this all goes according to plan, guys. 12 mechs. Okay, I'm going to fix my weapons here. So basically, when weapons are highlighted red, they're in, like, the automatic rotation. When they're not highlighted in red, they're out of the rotation. Um, and so, as you'll see, in a second, I'm going to fire my autocannon 5 when I get in range of this guy's legs, like now. And then it went to the PPC um automatically so i think that's called the aws or the automatic weapon system um and this is the final battle so really the ac5 it's okay if it runs out of steam i just gotta take out this one guy oh he's firing at me though boom oh he took out my ppc i think i think i lost an arm that's uh that's actually not good. Uh the PPC is like uh quite important to my strategy here. Boom. Uh okay. I think I can take this one guy. Um hopefully anyway. And assuming I can, then basically I should turn my medium lasers in. As long as I can take this one guy, I'll just have to, like, sneak up on the other guys from behind, and then it won't be a problem that I only have one PPC. But it kind of is a problem right now. He seems to be ignoring me. 
Okay. The fact that I only have one PPC, though, means I have a lot of uh, extra heat distribution. So I should just be able to fire, you know, rapidly and it won't be a problem. Also, I think my buddy's backing me up. Somebody's shooting at this guy from behind. Yeah, I got a Warhammer here by my side. All right, there. We're expecting that. You got my arm, but I got the best of you. That enemy Shadowhawk, I don't know if you can see it. It's sort of like right there. Uh, up in the sky, flying around. <laughs> I feel like he's panic flying. Kind of funny. Oh yeah, you take his legs out. Look, my buddy is shooting at this Battlemaster's legs too. Oh, nice, I sniped it. My guys are learning my tactics. Okay, that Shadowhawk is fleeing for its life. Okay, everyone get the Shadowhawk. I'm going for this Marauder here. Oh, one of my Warhammers is engaging the Marauder. It's ballsy. All right. I only have one PPC and a lot of grit. Can I make it happen? Also, I have backup. Lots of backup. I guess we could be shooting this Marauder's arms off to take off his PPCs. Totally disarm him. That's another tactic. I mean, I keep going for the legs because I feel like it's the quickest way to down enemies. But you definitely could be uh, going for, like, other parts of them. Um, let's see. We're not in range yet. Boom. Oh, yeah. This thing is done. Look how, how damaged it is so far. Oh, and down it goes. All right. Only one enemy left. Where did he go? Where did he go? My guy. I think my allies know where he is. Uh, uh, where is he? Oh, did we just fail? Or did we succeed? Oh, we succeeded. I couldn't tell. I heard gunfire. And I was like, shit, did the Shadowhawk get behind us? Boom! We demolished them. Look at that. We made 10 million. Well, we got crap on the salvage. We got totally boned on the salvage, but we got paid 10 million bucks. Uh, let's check out the let's survey the damage. First of all, how damaged did I actually get? So in terms of repairs, wow, 88% armor. So they just got a lucky shot that took out my PPC. Heavy damage, light damage. There we go. All right, and my arm. We'll make our my arm fully functional. Um, and we will reload. Boom. All right. And in terms of our dudes, Sajak, wow, you, uh, you maintained your Warhammer very well. The Battlemaster, similarly, wow, 96% armor. It barely got a scratch. That's awesome. And it's ammo baser full. It never got in the mix. And oh my God, Dark Horse, dude, what were you doing? He lost a machine gun. Uh, that's actually, and his SRMs are out. Wow, Dark Horse was getting in the mix. He was getting in the mix. Any cool mechs to buy? Rifleman, nah. I don't know what I would buy at the moment. Like, I might buy a Marauder and swap out one of my Warhammers. I might also buy a Battlemaster and swap out one of the Warhammers. But really, the, I mean, we just we just totally demolished 12 different mechs. I don't feel like we're desperately in need of uh of upgrades or anything like that um and in fact uh tricky nick tricky nick no no one else uh our towards act i was wondering if you could get anyone who's excellent excellent but i guess it's fairly rare or maybe i just don't have enough reputation at the moment checking out our crew uh say jack is still average dark horse is excellent Maybe it's time to sack Sajak. Should we do just a clean wipe? I I I think so. I'm sorry, Sajak. You know what? We're going to stay friends. But as far as this mercenary crew is concerned, get the hell out. You're fired. Learn how to pilot a mech better. <laughs> uh, look, we're confident. The, the Stein, House Steiner is confident in us. The Curitans hate us. That's about it. We should stop taking missions against them, I guess, because they kind of hate us. All right, the next person who's good and excellent, we will uh, accept into our ragtag crew. Uh, but for now, let's let's uh, head to the final uh, story section of this game. And to do that, we need to find where this Alberio company is located. You know, it's funny. I think I said Alberio, but it's the Mata... 
That's a sushi company, but it, this is so confusing. So Albireo is the planet we want to get to. But look at this in uh, in the Draconis Combine. There's a Matasuda company, but it has nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with the Matabushi Incorporated. So a lot of a lot of very similar sounding names. Albireo is where we got to go for the Matabushi Incorporated. So let's go ahead and do that. Seven hundred and twenty five thousand just to travel there. Good thing we made all that money recently. Dust devils spin in the too thin air, and a sound like distant thunder rolls over the dry mountains. Another minute, and the thunder builds to a roar, and seven Karnov heavy lift choppers rise over the ridges in a tight V formation. Their tilting rotors, already in the vertical landing position, still in formation, they settle in a storm of dust for a pair of massive two story high steel vaulted doors set in the cracked face of a cliff. Kurita infantry pour from both sides of each machine and quickly establish a defensive perimeter in the choking dust. Good thing we have like five decked out battlemasters. Only three pilots, but details. A map showing the landing site with a time and sign simply a friend smells of another trap, but it's the only lead and at least it's produced something interesting. And besides, a good auto pistol with plenty of extra clips should handle any surprises. Dude, bring a mech. Behind the cliff face, uh, the sun fills the sky with a blazing red as it sets and the shadows begin to stretch across the desert landscape. The giant doors crack and light spills uh, in greater amounts as the crack spreads and the doors open on silent hinges. More troops, this time in Matabushi security u uniforms, double time out in two neat rows and form up, creating a guarded roadway uh, to the VTOL craft. Tracked vehicles appear from inside the mountain, and the loading begins. The six craft forming the wings of the formation are loaded first with seemingly endless stream of coffin-sized metallic containers. Last, a single container with special guards is loaded onto the lead aircraft. They track vehicles returning the vault, and the security guards break formation in that instant. The ground around the landing site erupts as troops in desert camo rise out of the sand, like returning dead, their lasers and automatic rifles blazing. The security guard, taken by surprise, are ravaged before they can regroup, and even then, they have already lost at least half their numbers. An intense firefight ensues as the curated troops fall back into the cargo holds of the VTOL. The air begins to churn as the choppers crank up for an escape, but for some, it's too late as the mysterious attackers board the craft and murder Sansa. Jeez. One chopper leaves the ground in a hurry, but two law rockets arc out from the ground and connect in a thunderous, fiery blast that showers the scene below in a glowing metal rain. The wreck crashes to the ground in front of the vault, crushing the remaining security forces and effectively cutting off any support from that end for the moment. And then in the middle of the fight, a woman in knee-high bioflex boots and a VTO. Well, it's, totally, uh, it's totally our friend from the bar. The one who saved us from the Black Widow. Uh, she cuts across the carnage. Her long hair hangs free as she fights like a wildcat across the landscape. She's heading for the lead craft. Well, I say we follow her. In the smoke, dust and confusion, it's an easy run to the open cargo door. Bodies lay sprawled on the ground. and One hangs half in, half out of the doorway. The aircraft is already lifting off and it requires a jump just to catch the edge of the nose point towards the ground and the Karnov speeds off across the desert. The ground begins rushing past your feet as the 30-ton chopper gains altitude. One slip now, but it's amazing what a little adrenaline can do. Looking back from the bay door, the cliff is aglow from the fire of the burning wreck and the remaining VTOLs are airborne and now speeding off in different directions. Inside, there are more bodies strewn about the hold like castaway toys. Auto pistol out, safety off, and a slow walk through the short passage to the cockpit. Just three steps ahead, another man in a tan jumpsuit is making the same trip. As he reaches the cockpit, his arm moves out and gracefully pushes the barrel of his gun against the long, tangled hair of the pilot. So sorry to disappoint you, Tasha, Kearney says smoothly. Oh, it's just Kearney, dude. You can see Tasha calculating possibilities as the Karnov makes a sudden plunge into the left. With the blinding speed, she disarms Kearney and he falls towards her. The aircraft levels out and Tasha is out of the seat and she and Kearney square off as you step through the door. The look of surprise on both their faces is almost comical. Just in time, Kearney says with a smile. 
Tasha glares at him. Don't listen to him. He's ISF, she says quickly. What? She's the ISF agent, Kearney replies in surprise. Oh man, we gotta trust somebody. So definitely I remember back in the day, you would save your game frequently. And when you'd encounter stuff like this, if you picked the wrong answer, uh, you would just reload. But I happen to know here that you're supposed to trust uh, Tasha. No dice, Kearney. Tasha flashes a healthy smile your way. Nice work, partner. Her hand flashes out and chops Kearney's neatly along the back of the neck. He slumps to the floor. She takes the pilot seat again, shutting down the autopilot. The VTOL makes a hard bank right. We hit Matabushi pretty hard tonight, she says. After a while, caught him with their pants down. That won't happen again. She studies you and the instrument lights glint in her eyes. You're wondering what's going on, no doubt. Well, I'll tell you what I can. We're MI6, a special group of Davian agents, and coincidentally on this mission, you and MI6 have the same target, Matabushi. We got wind that they would be making a large move of assets and decided to hit. That's what we got. Gold bullion, a lot of captured cash ready for laundering, some lost tech items. Oh man, imagine they give you a lost tech mech out of this. That'd be awesome piloting around like a Star League era battlemaster or something into the final fight. Dreams, guys, dreams. And a large set of computer files. That's where you come in. In those files is the location of the group who destroyed your home and where they're keeping your precious chalice. Oh yeah, there's some kind of like sacred chalice we have to get back to prove that we're not the bad guys. I don't know. There, there's a chalice. I figure with that info and say a 5 million C-bill share of tonight's haul, you ought to be able to close down their Anders Moon operation. I killed two birds with one throw. Deal? She grins at you. I thought it might be. One last thing. Everything I've told you is confidential. To everyone else, MI6 does not exist. So keep it to yourself. Whoa, we're like hobnobbing with James Bond over here. Later, with a fatter bank account, you scan the disk she gave you on Operation Inroad, the overall plan, set up a cover operation in the Federated Suns, mostly for money laundering and smuggling. Expenses, a jump ship supplied by Matabushi's trade partner, Grig Grias, that bastard, a special lance of uh, mechs consisting of a warhammer and four battle masters known as the Darkwing, a large payroll for agents and bribes on Anders Moon, including one J. Rowe, and right now the chalice of Hearn sits guarded uh, by the dark wing on Radstat. All right, so Radstat is where we have to go. <laughs> Many of the people here have heard of the Blazing Aces and of their attacks on Kurita Holdings. Eyes watch you with silent hate. So this is actually kind of an interesting part of the game, which I totally forgot. That last part was not part of the story. But basically, if you become hated by a particular faction, then when you go to their planets, they definitely don't like you. In fact, I don't know if they'll even sell us mechs and i don't know if we'll even be able to sell mechs to them like for instance if we do try and sell this um oh no they're they're willing to offer eight million uh yeah we'll take it uh there we have four mechs i again would love to get a battle master to place one of my warhammers but it's not fully essential we got a five million dollar payday from our spy friend there we have 30 million in wealth and we have the planet where the evil uh, enemies are holed up. We just need an extra pilot, basically. And interestingly, the final fight sounds like it's going to be between a lance, a reinforced lance. So rather than four mechs, it'll be five. One Battlemaster and four Warhammers. But I'm pretty sure we can definitely take that. Um, all right. So let's, first of all, figure out where we need to go. So... Uh, planets, Curita. Okay, so where is Radstat? Radstat is right over there. Oh, we're not going to Radstat yet. Uh, let's just start hopping planets, looking for a battle master. I will pay any price. I no longer need to go to rich planets to buy mechs. I'll just pay whatever. I don't care. We're just gonna start hopping planets, looking for a battle master and the fourth beetle, basically our fourth beetle, the the fourth member of our crew. We want somebody who is good and excellent. Uh, and those are crappy mechs. On to the next planet. What sounds good over here? A mining world rich in metal ores. Souk 2. I'll try my luck there. Hopefully Souk 2 specializes in the Battlemaster variety or Marauder. I think I've literally only seen like one Marauder 
this whole game. Um, and it's the one that I'm piloting. Good and average, nope. Average and good, nope. Average and poor? Dude. <laughs> I had a brush with the Widow, now I need another mech. Dude, you were in my crew when that brush happened, I'm pretty sure. I was there, man! And you didn't- you didn't have a brush with her, I did. Um, alright. Let's try Dust Ball. Most, most wicked desires come true. We've been here before, actually. Um, do they have a Battle Master? No, they have a Locust and a Jenner, the lowliest of mechs. The only way it could get worse is two Locusts. Kinji Tsai, good and average. Not interested. Average and poor, not interested. We need to find a good excellent, man. We're blowing millions, just like, you know, flying around the universe. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Spend some time with uh, the Wacko Rangers and Miller's Marauders. You're in, JJ. Anyone else? Oh, Tank Smith. Oh, here's all the good pilots. We could have hired him, too. We don't want her. All right. So there were two good pilots just waiting to be hired. And nothing. We already have a Warhammer. So here's our crew right now that we got. We just got JJ Kidder. Um, so we have two Warhammers from Outer Battlemaster. I'm going to just bounce back and forth between a couple other planets just to see if I can find that last Battlemaster. So we'll go between Hesperus 2 and Tharkad because they're pretty close. Oh, and first stop, we find a Battlemaster. Sold. All right, let's go ahead and... Beef this battle mass this uh, battle master out. Repair, reload, bring you into the team. So, what does the Warhammer have? The Warhammer has two PPCs, eighteen heat sinks. I'm just trying to think of like what mech is going to be better here. I think I do want to keep one Warhammer because they are pretty deadly short range, like between the small lasers and machine guns. Um, but what does the battle master actually? have here so the battle master is 15 extra tons and it has a ppc three medium lasers machine gun oh actually i think the battle masters are more deadly short range so the only advantage of the warhammer actually and how many heat sinks 18 the only advantage of the warhammer is double ppcs but i feel like that's just too much ppc for a mech it, the mechs just overheat too much so we found one battle master that easily I am really tempted to find one more. So let's see if we can make this dream a reality. All right, Tharkad. Do you have a battle master for sale? No, you have junk. Locusts and Phoenix Oxes. Back to Hesperus 2. Do you guys have a battle master for sale? No, you guys have junk. Wow, you went from having like an awesome reserve of mechs to having like nothing. Eventually, one of these guys is going to have one. No mechs for sale this week. Jeez, nothing. Okay, we'll do one more trip to Tharkad. If they don't have it, whatever. I think we've got this in the bag either way. And... Well, they got more mechs, but nothing we want. Okay, whatever. We have two Battlemasters, a Marauder. We have two Warhammers, but we're only going to field one. I think that is a solid crew. What do you guys think? We ready for this final mission? So we want rad stat. And I think we're just gonna hop right into combat. We're done being a mercenary. We're done negotiating contracts. The Darkwing base is nearby, but an attack now would be fruitless. News comes to you of the return of the Chalice by Jairus. Oh no, we took too long. Many of the people heard of the Blazing Aces and their attacks be hurt hurtful. Oh shoot. we took too long okay hold on time out uh this is why you have multiple save games pro tip don't take forever because then you'll lose okay so one thing i forgot is you're on a bit of a time crunch in this game you only have five years to sort things out so i just loaded up a game what did our crew look like all right you know what if this is the crew that we have to go with this is the crew that we have to go with Let's go ahead and I think it was Alberio or something over here that we had to go to. Let's go to Alberio and then cut right to the destination where we need to go. Uh, because I don't think we have any time to mess around. So blah, blah, blah. Follow her. Blah, blah. Trust her. And we're good. And now 
Uh, planets, Curita, Brad said. Hopefully, this is within... There's still time. All right, data from the disk on Operation Inroad is specific about the location of the Darkwing base. Delay for one second. And I just want to see if there's a Battlemaster. There is not. All right. Let's do this. I like how we're taking a dropship into combat, even though, aren't we on the planet we need to attack? I don't know. So this is it, a planetary assault. All right. So I th think we might have to fight multiple battles here, so we're just going to, uh, you know, do things very carefully, like we always do. Uh, you're going to attack that one, and you're going to attack. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, Battlemaster, 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 and one Warhammer. All right. We got a bunch of Battlemasters and a Warhammer. This guy's like walking right in our field of view. Our ally here is kind of getting right in our way. Um, so three Battlemasters, not a problem. We can take down two by ourselves. Oh, my God. Okay, dude. Fine. Walk in front of me. Yeah, just, just cut right in front of me, man. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you. I guess I'll go to your right. Uh, now, is he going to the right? I don't know what's happening here. You give a guy a battle master, and what does he do? He gets all up in your face. I think he's just trying to show off that he's in a battle master. He's like, hey, boss, look at this. A freaking battle master. I mean, the, the heaviest mech that exists, apparently, in the universe at this time. Obviously, that's not true, but in this video game version of the Battletech universe, this is the heaviest mech you can get. Um, okay, I'm going to take my medium lasers off of rotation. Three and four off. I'm going to bring my auto cannons to bear. And we're going to start by pummeling this guy. He needs to get a little closer, though. Um, everyone's going to converge on this guy. Wow, this one guy is going to go down in no time. Hey, hold on. Just trying to get, like, away from my allies a little bit so I don't end up shooting them in the back by mistake. I wish there was a way on modern computers to have the game not lag. Like, again, like, look how laggy it's being. It's actually pretty shocking. Okay, here we go. Let's start, uh... Let's start the Autocannon 5 Barrage here. That probably will hit. Boom. Hey, dude, this Battlemaster is, like, getting right in my way. It's actually really problematic. Okay, I'm just going to trust that they have that one Warhammer under control. And I'm going to go, like, over this way gonna go around the battle master so that I get a clean line of sight on these guys yeah here we go all right aim for the legs boys don't forget the tactics everybody stay in formation aim for the legs oh god the lag I think I missed and hits I think I missed again okay they, well, we got this. We got this, I think. I can't even tell if my auto cannon shots are like hitting. Okay, maybe I should be focusing on one of the other guys. Because three of my guys are converging on that one Warhammer, so why don't I focus on softening these guys up? That will be my goal. Also, I like how the enemies are coming at us one at a time. Uh, that's uh, convenient. Everyone, just wait your turn. We will demolish you all in good time. We got to go for his like right leg. Boom! It's gone. All right, there goes one battle master. Who else wants some? This other warhammer though is still not going down. I guess as long as my guys keep him distracted. All we really need. Oh, the other battle masters getting in the mix with these guys. I'll take the backup. Oh god. Fusion reactor shut down. Overheating. And 
Oh god. And boom. And come on. Shoot him in the legs. Oh man, my heat is so high. Oh no, they're going for me too. Oh, this isn't great. Oh, my reactor's still shut down. Hey guys, can you kill that one Warhammer already? Oh god. Okay, we took out two- I've taken out two Battlemasters. Can you guys take down one Warhammer? I feel like my guys- what is happening with my dudes? i look over here for a second. Okay, I'm gonna help them take down this Warhammer so they can just get in the mix with, uh, the last Battlemaster there. Fire! That's a leg shot right there. Kaboom. All right, guys. We have one Battlemaster to take down. Can we do it together? As a team! Go team! I don't think I have a clear shot on his, uh, legs, actually. He's using a smart tactic, which is he's hiding behind his downed friend. And he seems to be doing nothing, too. Like his AI is glitched out. Okay, maybe I should stop firing my uh, auto cannon. And I'm going to bring my medium lasers back online. I'm just going to let the heat dissipate for a sec here. Let myself cool down. Like, look, he's not doing anything. He's like, I surrender. Well fought, you guys. Well fought. Oh, he's starting to move. I think maybe he's, like, stuck. Like, he might sort of be trapped on his friend. Oh, we blew out his center torso. All right, that's mech combat right there for you. Now, is there another mission? Yes, there is. Recovery of stolen property. All right, this is it, boys. How much damage have I taken? Some... I've taken a fair amount of damage. Actually. Okay, command... Okay, I want you guys to attack the enemies, though. So we have... Battlemaster... Attack enemy... So what we're gonna do is basically all attack this one Battlemaster, then we'll just sneak around the back. I feel like that's the way to do it. So the uh, the girl, by the way, lied. She said it was a reinforced lance of five mechs, but there's totally like eight guys here. What is this? Two full mechs or two full lances of mechs. Assault class mechs too. Three battle masters and a warhammer. That's formidable. That is formidable. Uh, anyway, I uh, I guess I'm gonna switch to the command view to speed this up. So the game doesn't have to chug through all the polygons. Almost a dozen polygons on screen at once. You know, that's how they would advertise this game back then. I'm like walking into an ally here. Don't mind me, Warhammer man. It's funny to think of like how, you know, back in the day, before people had seen many 3D games, this game, people were like, holy crap, you actually get to pilot a mech. It's so advanced, you know? Uh, but by today's standard, it's like so primitive. Uh, but I remember being impressed by this game. Um, I think Mech Warrior 2 was out by the time I really got into Mech Warrior 1. Um, like I only got Mech Warrior 1 when it came out in the Battletech Power Hits. That was basically like a best of set where they re-released some classic Battletech games. Um, you know, all together. So it was Crest Nox Inception, Crest Nox Revenge, and Mech Warrior. That's basically where I played this game. Um, but, boom. Let's see if that actually hits. That is a long range barrage. And fire another one. One of these is gonna hit him. That's for sure. Oh, he's dodging it. He's wise. All right, I'm gonna stop wasting ammo then. I'm going to go back to command view because this is taking way too long. So I think we just have to kill him and then sneak around, destroy the base, and we basically win the game. And then everyone is like, oh, we were wrong. You were able to get the, the chalice back. You must be the true king. 
Uh, here's another trick. You can like zoom in to like empty areas. Just like look how much faster the game runs now. Speed things up. Basically, whatever you can do to reduce the polygon count on the screen, that's how you increase the speed of the game. And they are just demolishing this guy. I want to get in on the mix too, guys. Leave some leg for me. Boom, down he goes. You're welcome. Two PPC shots strategically placed. It's funny, in the board game, or in like any of the tactical games, if you could aim at body parts with this level of precision, it'd be way easier to kill enemies. You know, like being able to just totally snipe out legs is like a huge deal. Um, you, I think if you use jump jets, you can fall over in this game. And there is a button for getting back up, but it, uh, you know, obviously you can't do it if you only have one leg. I'm pretty sure in Mech Warrior 2, if you destroyed an enemy's leg, literally the mech just exploded. Or like if you destroyed one leg, they just couldn't move anymore. But if you destroyed both, then the mech exploded. Like you can't, you can't live without legs. Um. Okay, we're going to. Oops, we're going to. Come on. Oh my God. Move attack. Here. And we're actually using some different commands here. Move attack. Here. And you can act on your own and do the base thing. So it says recovery of stolen property. I don't know if that means destroy the base or what. I feel like if you destroyed the base, wouldn't you destroy the stolen property? Like that's not recovering. <laughs> that's blowing it up. Your definition of recovering property is exploding it. I guess that works. Now I'm going to focus on destroying these mechs. I assume the AI knows what it's doing and it's not going to screw me over here. I don't ever remember the game being like, oh, you destroyed the, uh, you know, the place where the chalice was. You fail. So I'm pretty sure that's not a threat. I'll just trust the AI. Meanwhile, I'm going to tango one last time with this Warhammer here. Warhammer versus Marauder. Boom, boom. Oh, I got you, buddy. Wait till these PPCs come back online. Oh, you think you got me? I got you. You're not trapped in here with me. Or no, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. Okay, let's see what's going on on the command screen. I'm going to stop moving forward here. And I'm going to say, act on your own. And you also act on your own. Uh, uh, okay, whatever. There you go. Attack enemy. Attack the base. There we go. There's only one other battle master defending. I think I can solo him. Mono a mono. Like a clan warrior. So the clans obviously never make it in uh, Mech Warrior 1 here. They never show up. They'd be way too advanced. But yes, clans are all about uh, honorable one-on-one -on -one combat. Although, how honorable is it to one-on-one -on -one combat when you have a clearly superior mech? Like, they want... The clans... The, the thing that I always thought was funny about the clans is they want to show, like, how much more superior and better they are as warriors, but they're they're basically playing the game on easy mode. You know, like, when you come into battle with a war machine that is, like, twice as capable as your opponent's, and you claim to be some kind of like sophisticated, you know, warrior, it's like not super impressive when you win. Cause it's like, well, yeah. You know, it'd be more impressive is come on the battlefield with a Jenner and then win. As oily smoke begins to rise from the last Darkwing mech, the infantry flees. Inside the abandoned bunker, a high security vault breaks under concentrated laser fire. Beyond the ruined door, a sacred chalice of Hearn sparkles with reflected light. So apparently we just needed this chalice and somehow it all undid the conspiracy that was against me. I don't understand, but whatever. Back on Anders Moon, the chalice and the data disc uh, on Operation Inroad clear the Vandenberg name. The family title and honor is restored. So I guess when you start this game, they say there's like a five year clock before the evil Jairus guy is gonna be crowned king. But previously, when I took too long and I found the data disk showing a big conspiracy, it's like if I went back with the data disk and was like, hey, by the way, he set this all up, it's a conspiracy, they'd be like, well, 
that might be true, but we kind of already elected him, you know? Like, it's... Shouldn't he just go to jail anyway? I don't know. Either way, we successfully completed Mech Warrior 1 here. Um, you may continue or quit playing. We're going to continue because there is a little post-game adventure that we can go on, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if I actually knew this about the game uh, back when I originally played it myself. But uh, if you were paying attention in that data disc, it talked about how Grig Grias helped betray my family. And it turns out you can go, go get a bit of old-fashioned revenge on Grig. And so that's the last thing that we're going to do in this game. But uh, yeah, Mech Warrior 1 here, pretty cool game, I think, all things considered. Um, even though the combat, I think, is obviously dated, and you can be obviously very cheap like I was, just shooting out enemy legs, and so it's not really that difficult once you get the hang of it. The fact that you can go anywhere in the inner sphere, you can buy mechs, you can haggle, you can buy low, sell high, go merchant for a while, you can negotiate contracts, you know, all of that stuff is so cool. And it really, you know, this game came out in 1989. And like 2016, the Battleset game came out that had all those features. You know, that's like, what, 30 years later? Like the features that were in this game, I used to dream that some of these features existed in like a Crescent Hawks style. Like imagine Crescent Hawks Inception, except that you could travel to any planet you want and have adventures. Or Crescent Hawks Revenge, where it was a tactical real-time strategy battle tech game where you have to buy your mechs and repair them and like sell them. And you can take contracts and negotiate the contracts, travel wherever you want. Like this game has so many features that I think are just amazing. That even though the combat itself is a little basic, I, it, it always has a soft spot in my mind. Anyway, um, the one last thing we can do, as I was saying, is take vengeance on Grig. And do you guys remember what planet we encountered Grig on? It was a couple of videos ago. You may not. It was Tabayama. So if we go to Tabayama, we can get some sweet vengeance. And I don't think I've ever done this. The entire time I have uh, played Mech Warrior my whole life. So I'm excited today. Against the weathered brick walls, it's a drunk in tattered clothes, clutching a mostly empty bottle of cheap whiskey. Patch covers one eye and his pockmarked face sports the stubble of an unkempt beard. As you pass, he speaks just loudly enough for you. Word is you've no love for Grig or his bunch. That true? And if it is, well now... There's quite a reward on Zed for the feller. What's man enough to claim it? You think maybe you be that man? Go on. So it happens I've been on this dirt ball a long time, and I have a waiting for my chance at that pig. Seen a thing or two I have, but not been a warrior sort like yourself. I've had to wait, but now I think my waiting's over. He's a big shipman going out tonight. He'll see to that personally, he will. Won't have but two guards with him. That's when you can nail him, and that's my price. You gotta kill him. Take him. It's no good. He has to die. Deal? Well, I'm in the business of vengeance, so let's make a deal. The dark comes alive as lights appear at the edges of old landing site. Once used by the military, it has been abandoned for years except for the occasional dark night business deal. Overheard, a star moves across the heavens and slowly begins to grow. Within minutes, it has grown to fill the sky with a blazing blue-white glory. The roar of the engines dominates the sky as ever so slowly, 12,000 tons of mule-class dropship settles onto the burning ferrocrete. Once the engines have died, that the apparently empty warehouse on the far edge of the field comes to life. Heavy vehicles move out onto the still-smoking landing pad toward the cargo ramps, dropping from the ship. Men appear, moving crates from the trucks to the ship. Missed all a long, black luxury hovercraft moves like a shark. It stops near uh, the loading, and two powerful-looking men step out, weapons at their ready. One wears night vision goggles. From behind them appears a bloated form of Grig Grias. The old man was right about the when and the where, but the pad is swarming with armed men as well as the expected two personal guards. So let's uh, go ahead and wait for a sec here. 
The loading finishes and the trucks return to the far side of the field. The black hovercraft glides soundlessly to rest behind a blast screen directly below you. So the old man was right. Greg and his guards step out of the craft as the engine of the mule begin to howl. Let's do this! Strike now. A gyroslug carbine carries 20 rounds in a clip. It takes only four to splatter both guards against the hovercraft. Oh man, murder! Straight up murder! Griggs' blood-stained face turns up at you as you drop easily uh, into the shadow of the blast screen. It's like a Batman move. I've, like, jumped from, like, a rooftop down on him. You! He recovers quickly, eyes searching restlessly for an out. Well, well, I suppose you have ideas about the price on my head. Perhaps you're a little upset about my agent's actions on Dustfall. He acted on his own. I never told him to kill you. As to the reward, I'll double it. Besides, you don't think you can get out of here alive, do you? He nods toward the distant buildings. Um, I mean, I am like the prince of a whole planet. I think I can smooth this over. Kaboom! He watches for an answer, feigning indifference, and pushes the ruined body of his former guard off the hood of the hovercraft. Seems I'll need to find some new talent, he says, and then his hand flies up. A blood-soaked machine gun pistol gleams in the night. The carbine... In your arms cost twice and Greg slams against the vehicle as the explosive shells rip into him. You make quite a scene at the Civilian Guidance Corp Center as you pull up in the sleek black hovercraft. The official there is less than thrilled to see the corpse of his former employer in the back. But there is little he can do as a crowd is gathered and its fringes and on its fringes an old man watches. He catches your eye and nods, a smile pulling at the corner of his mouth. The voice of the CGC official cuts in. I'll have your bounty for you very soon. And then if I were you, I'd get the hell off this planet as fast as I could. <laughs> and then once again, many people hate us because uh, basically we've burned all goodwill we might have at one point had with the people of the Draconis Combine. But anyway, that's it. We have successfully done absolutely everything you can do besides continuing to take more contracts. I like the fact that uh, you have now cleared your family's name. You can return home as like a prince and ruler, but you decide to continue to run a small ragtag mercenary crew because, hey, that's way more fun in the uh, world of Battletech. But anyway, what did you guys think of the first Mech Warrior game here? As I have said a number of times over the course of these videos, I really enjoyed this game as a kid. I actually never really played it right when it came out. As I said, I got it with the Battletech Power Hits, and the Battletech game I knew the most as a kid was Crescent Hawk's Inception. But Crescent Hawk's Revenge, when I got it, quickly became my, my favorite, slightly edging out Inception. I always thought of Mech Warrior as like the third game in the franchise. Like it kind of seems it goes Inception, Revenge, and then Mech Warrior. Uh, and Mech Warrior is kind of unrelated to the Crescent Hawks games. But in fact, this game takes place between the Crescent Hawks Inception and the Crescent Hawks Revenge. If you go back and watch my Cre uh, Crescent Hawks Revenge playthrough, uh, you'll note that at a particular point in the campaign, you actually encounter Gideon Braver and his mercenary crew from this game. So kind of cool that the games crossed over a little bit, even though they were made by different publishers. They exist in the larger shared Battletech universe, and as a kid, I was obsessed with that universe, and I still think the universe is totally awesome and cool, so a lot of fond memories here. I hope that these videos brought you a bit of nostalgia. I hope it was fun to see the Mech Warrior game a full playthrough again after all these years. If you did enjoy yourself, don't forget to like the video and all that jazz. You might want to check out my other Battletech playthroughs. Again, Crest Knox Inception and Revenge. And other than that, until we meet again, my friends... Take care of yourselves, and remember, no guts, no galaxy. Peace.